A few years ago, while getting ready to go to bed, I asked Alexa to uh, play me some music. And in return, it asked me, by the way, I would like to get to know your voice as it would really help with convenience. Something similar happened a while back that reminded me of the story. Danielle from Oregon installed Alexa devices and smart bulbs in every room of her house, accepting Amazon's claims that they were not spying on her until she received an alarming call from one of her husband's colleagues saying, unplug your Alexa devices right now, you're being hacked. At first, she didn't believe the coworker. After all, who would? But then the coworker said, you sat there talking about hardwood floors. Danielle realized that the coworker must have heard everything. What were the common factors in these two stories? Smart devices. As I illustrated, we both got very suspicious of smart devices very quickly. So we really need to ask the question, what are these smart devices actually doing? I mean, sure, they're useful and all, but how much do they know about you and what goes on in your personal life? It's very obvious that in the 21st century, we have very little privacy online. So you would think that we might have some privacy in our own homes, but chances are that's wrong. We first need to take a step back and ask, what are smart devices? Smart devices are devices with powerful AI. Think of it this way. An, a, an energy bar is in theory made to energize you or nourish you, but instead it's really made full of sugar. That's why it tastes so good. The same thing applies to smart devices. They are made to be helpful and convenient, but in reality, they're made to mind your data. Now that we come up with a solid definition and understanding of what a smart device is, we need to ask the, uh, the question, what are the problems with smart devices? What are the problems with smart devices? One might think that you know, the smart devices only turn on when you say a certain wait word, like Siri or Alexa. But that's actually not true. A, a trusted friend of mine tried to convince me of this, but he was wrong. To verify this, I sat down with an internet security consultant. He told me that to be able to listen for the wait word, like Siri or Alexa, they had to be listening all the time. Now, when I heard this, my mind was blown, as I had never thought like this. I felt like I opened the book on a whole new chapter of what's going on in the world with privacy. After doing some of my own research, I found out that Apple co uh, contractors regularly heard customers' confidential data. This was insane. Apple kept recordings of their customers and they couldn't do anything about it. But this was just the uh, smart device that we knew about. There had to be other smart devices that no, uh, that no one really knew about. Amazon filed a patent to be able to listen for the words bought or want and to be able to send targeted ads based on those certain words. We should be aware of the fact that these companies are trying to mine all our data and take all our data and take all of it in an attempt to make more money for themselves. While there is no perfect solution to the wide and gaping problem known as internet privacy, there are some steps we can take to reduce uh, these invasions of our privacy. One step would be to update privacy settings and delete your recordings. Again, delete probably doesn't delete stuff. It's like the broccoli we we're all forced to eat as kids. We all tried at some point or another to put the broccoli on the side of our mouth, and we all inevitably failed. The same thing applies to Amazon. They do have the ability to retrieve these deleted recordings. So really, their, their delete button is nothing more than mere tokenism. Another method would be to, uh, delay to mute your devices, or another one to, could be to put white noise in the machine on. But by far the most surefire way to make sure that your privacy isn't being invaded is to uh, unplug your devices. Now, I have friends who, when I told them about this, called me Amish. They said it's a good tool and I don't know how to use it. And they are right and they are wrong. They are right in the fact that it is helpful and convenient and gives you help and anything you want at the simple sound of your voice. 
but a tool is an object sitting patiently waiting for you to pick it up and use it. It doesn't spy on you or, uh, or, so, or on any unsuspecting person. And it doesn't have ulterior motives. That's what my friends got wrong. Danielle from Oregon, when she contacted Amazon, Amazon told her that Echo woke up to a word in background conversation sounding like Alexa. Then it interpreted following background conversation as a send message request. At which point, Alexa asked out loud, to whom? Then it asked, and then, it, then following background conversation was interpreted as a contact name. Alexa asked, contact name, right? Then Amazon uh, finally interpreted that last piece of background conversation as right and sent the message. Now, to any rational person, this would be a pretty shifty and sketchy line of coincidences, but Amazon is sticking by their word, uh, by, by whatever they said. Furthermore, proving my point that they are invading your privacy and you don't know it. Matthew George from Dallas, Texas, unplugged his Alexa devices for good because of the fact that it's spying on him and asking for his voice. If we can even take one of the steps that I suggested in this, uh, in this talk, we can, uh, keep our, uh, we can dramatically keep our, uh, uh, change the way people uh, spy on us. And we can keep ourselves safe forever from predatory companies. Remember, at the end of the day, if you aren't paying for the product, you are the product. Thank you.